three, two, one. <sniffs> Dab. I hate myself for doing that. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Hanging with Jenky. Well, friends, it is another week. We have another week under our belts. I'm very excited because this weekend for me is a long weekend because President's Day is Monday. So I'm excited about that. But in other news, stuff and things. I'm really trying to be focused here. But uh, but it, pff, I make notes for Hanging with Janky so I can be as unfocused as I want whenever I record it. <laughs> That's the point of making notes for yourself, right? So you can look at those. Anyway, that's, you know what we're here for. We're here for channel updates and sub things and gaming news. So let's get into it, shall we? I love whenever I slide over here that I have to like sit on the very edge of my chair to make sure I have enough room for whatever I put up here. <sighs> okay, so let's talk about what got up on the channel this week. Well, first of all, we had uh, For Honor because I didn't buy that game. So while the beta weekend was still happening, I made a video of me thrashing computer players as the peacekeeper. And it was pretty awesome. You can definitely go check that out under Janky Plays For Honor. Also, we had some sweet collaboration work this week with Pit People number six with Joe. And actually Pit People number seven is already up on his channel. We kept at it doing stuff, um, finishing finishing General Custard's storyline. That's what we were doing. That's what we were doing, and it was great. Oh, we went back. We defeated the, the Redcoats, and uh, we got a sweet new character, which you will see if you watch the video. Also, Astro Nier with M.E.K., because we finally got that game to work again. And we were exploring caves and mountains and not dying, mostly. Probably. Check it out. It's awesome. Also, we had the Lost Constellation from The Night in the Woods. It is a, what do they call it? A supplementary game to Night in the Woods, which you should totally go check out because Night in the Woods is dropping next week, and I totally expect to be getting some of that up on the channel next week. So definitely go check out The Lost Constellation. It's a little long because I included all the game in it, but it's good. It's got some good story stuff in there. A little setup for Night in the Woods. It's great. What is this hand gesture? I don't know. Then of course we had The Witcher Part 30 where we just did like side quest stuff. Then we had uh, Demo Day Mr. Shifty, which is a new game released by Tiny Build. It is spectacular. Of course, Tiny Build, the same people behind Hello Neighbor and Cluster Truck. And this game is just beautiful. It is 22 minutes of me being utterly delighted with everything that's happening. It's beautiful. Definitely go check it out. And totally awesome. And also Guts and Glory number three. Yes, I made a third Guts and Glory video because this week it dropped early access on Steam. And I have a key for it because I was one of the backers. So definitely expect more Guts and Glory in the future. And I've already kind of looked a bit at the game and it's looking super nice. So definitely expect more of that coming to the channel in this upcoming week, which leads me into what's coming up next week. <sighs> Okay, so here's what we have coming up next week. It's looking hella good. We have more Guts and Glory. We have Night in the Woods, because that's coming up. We have a shared shenanigans, because we record one of those. And there will be another shared shenanigans coming up. I don't know if it will be next week or the week after, but it's going to be exciting because we're playing a game that I'm going to see at PAX. <sighs> Also, we have more Pit People, we have The Witcher 31, and then we have some other stuff that I am either not allowed to talk about right now because media embargo, or just because I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. But it's going to be exciting, it's going to be awesome, and oh my goodness, so much to tell you about. Also, there was one other thing I wanted to mention, I'll just slap it right over my face here. Um, I'm starting a new series coming up soon. I don't know if I'll start it before or after PAX, but generally the idea is people love demo days. And I love demo days, and I think they're super awesome. But there's so many demos that come out every week, either demos or alpha tests or beta tests or early access or even just like student projects that are just short little one-off games that look really cool, but I don't know where to put them. So I am expanding on demo days and creating a new series I call Janky's Lab. 
where we just we just play all these games and it's going to be great and it's going to be much more frequent and I don't think it's going to have like a set schedule but there will be more games released under that title and it's got like a nice graphic for it and everything and I already made up the thumbnail for it so it's going to be hella good. In other news, I think I finally understand what my thumbnail style is after cycling through like 50 different ways to do it. So that's also good, and I think you're going to really like it. I'm going to be honest, I was inspired by Super Couch Fighters because they got a real nice thumbnail system going. Anyway, let's continue to subs, shall we? Because we got some subs we need to thank. Okay, so before we get started into thanking subs, I just want to point out that yes, this past week there should have been an update on the Year of a Thousand Subs. No, I didn't record it because I'm a terrible person who got very busy over the last week, and I will put one up this weekend to explain how that's going. By the way, it's going pretty well, so that's good stuff. And in addition to that, I should announce that we have 186 subscribers on the channel now, which is super cool and awesome. Let me thank the two that subscribed this week right now. Here we go. So first up, we have Ruguru Entertainment, who is just wonderful. Oh, she seems so sweet on Twitter whenever, whenever we tweeted back and forth. She seems super cool. She does Let's Plays. Uh, she has a little bit of GTA and also some Elder Scrolls, some Throwback Thursday series where she goes back and like plays old games. It all looks super cool. She has 144 subscribers. You can also find her on Twitter. And definitely go check her out. And thank you, Rugaroo Entertainment, for subbing my channel. The other sub to thank this week is actually not a YouTuber themselves, but again, another person who just decided to sub for sub. Which is just, it's, it's, it's just, it's just delightful. It warms my heart when people sub because they like content. Starbit15, thank you so much for subscribing. I hope that you enjoy my content and continue to enjoy it in the future. And, yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much. And those are our two new subscribers for the week, so everyone give them a round of applause. They totally deserve it for joining the Jank Squad. And of course, thank you to all 186 members of the Jank Squad for subbing the channel. And I hope that you enjoy the content, I hope you continue to enjoy it, and thank you so much for being a part of this world. Part of my world. Oh my goodness, mushy, mushy every week. Well, that's okay. Now, let's move on to some gaming news, because there's good stuff this week. God, I'm so glad I joined Reddit. It makes my job so much easier this way. So first up in the gaming news scene, let's talk about PlayStation Now and how the service is being discontinued for PS3 and also the PS Vita. So for those of you who are not PlayStation gamers or PC gamers who like PlayStation games, you should probably know that PlayStation Now is the name of PlayStation's streaming service. It has hundreds of PS3 titles. Uh, I think it also has PS2 titles and PS titles, but I'm not entirely sure. The point is that it streams them, you know? It's a, like a subscription service just like Netflix or anything else. So you can stream games to your PS4, your PC, and previously your PS3 and also your PlayStation Vita. But it looks like they're discontinuing the service for the PS3 and the PS Vita. After thoughtful consideration, we decided to shift our focus and resources to PS4 and Windows PC to further develop and improve the user experience on these two devices. This move puts us in the best position to grow the service even further. If you use any of the above devices, we want to give you a heartfelt thanks for your support and we hope you'll continue to use us. Remember that all of your PS Now Cloud game saves can easily be accessed on both the PS4 and the Windows PC. I mean, I suppose I can understand the decision from a marketing standpoint from PlayStation because of course they want to focus on the PS4 and the PC because those are like the systems that a lot of people use. There's a, a big base there. But at the same time, for people who still had the PS3, I mean, maybe the reason they didn't get the PS4 is because they didn't want to spend the money to get the PS4. And the PlayStation Now service was really nice for them because they could stream a whole bunch of PS3 games instead of having to go out and buy them all. So, I mean, that sucks for people who still have a PlayStation 3, and I don't know, maybe they just don't want to play PC. Sometimes, you know, people don't play PC. I think it's a shame, because I'm a PC gamer, but, you know, people... People do what they do. 
And I think it's the same thing with the PlayStation Vita too. I mean, the PlayStation Vita was the thing that was made for like the person on the go. That was the point of the PlayStation Vita. And PS4 and PC aren't like portable systems. You can't just carry that wherever. So I think that kind of sucks from a on the go perspective that you can't stream games to the PS Vita anymore. But I don't know. I, again, I understand PlayStation's decision. <laughs> I understand PlayStation's decision from a marketing standpoint because they want to try to make the best service they can make and I think it would be easier for them to do that by focusing on the two biggest like gamer bases they have right now but at the same time I think it kind of sucks for some other people so I just thought that was some interesting interesting gaming news that I feel that I should share with you what is that my aunt called, and I might have to leave that in the footage because that was a pretty good speech I just gave. <sighs> Speaking of PlayStation-related things, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy just got a release date this week. I assume that was some sort of excited noise on my part, I'm really not sure. Anyway, for those of you who love Crash Bandicoot, as I do of course, you'll know that the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is the PS4 remaster of the first three games in the Crash series, Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, and Crash Bandicoot Warped, which is easily my favorite of those three because who doesn't love traveling through time and those great wall missions with Coco riding uh, Pura. Why couldn't I remember Pura's name for a hot second there? Anyway, the point of all this is that Activision released this week that the release date for the game will be June 30th of 2017. This is very exciting news. Not particularly exciting for me because I don't have a PS4, but if there's a way to maybe get the Insane Trilogy on PC, I might hit that up because I love Crash Bandicoot and also these remasters look really cool. It is kind of weird to see Crash with like actual fur instead of just like orange polygons, but uh... It, it looks pretty awesome on the whole. Like all these games put together, they look pretty good. So excited for that. In other news, we just learned that John Smedley of EverQuest fame will be leading an Amazon Game Studios in San Diego. I mean, that's pretty much the, the main meat of this story. So I guess I kind of gave the entire thing away in the intro. But John Smedley, for those of you who do not know, was the co-creator of EverQuest, which is probably the template of which just about every MMO online RPG comes from. And he just announced that he would be leading a team in San Diego for Amazon Game Studios on a new game. I am excited about this. However, I would also like to point out, has Amazon Game Studios released a single game yet? I know it's still pretty new, but still. Like Breakaway. Do you guys remember back in like, what was it, October, November sometime? Amazon Game Studios was just like, we have this awesome multiplayer online ballerina thing and we want you guys to test it out. It's going to be an alpha weekend. It's going to be great. And we're all just like, yes. Yes, let's do that. Hold on, hold on. Oh crap, I just ran up the stairs and for some reason I'm out of breath. Ugh. Anyway, it was a really sweet game and then the alpha weekend was over and then we haven't heard like, anything about it since, and it's just like, what happened to that game? So, I did some research. Turns out, Breakaway has its own Twitch page, and they have an inter-office league. Yes, that's right, the people who actually work on Breakaway have formed a league, and they play it on Twitch every Thursday. So the game still exists, I'm going to leave a link down to the Twitch page below, because I actually really like that game, and I enjoy watching it, and I will totally go check it out next time they're playing, but it's sort of like, what happens to Amazon Game Studios games? It's like you hear about them, they get started, and then they just drop off the face of the map. I don't know. But John Smedley is working on one, so maybe he can push one through to completion. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And then we have PAX East. So this isn't actually anything particular about PAX East that they've like released or anything, but I just wanted to let you guys know, I've scheduled so many appointments already. Is that bragging? Probably. But here's what I really wanted you guys to know. In case you haven't been watching my Twitter vids, I wanted to let you know that while I'm at PAX East, I intend to get a lot of swag from a lot of different booths and things, and I will be giving it away. 
That was a poorly constructed sentence in my head. Yeah, so when I get back from PAX with all this loot, of course, it will probably be more than I actually want to keep. So I want to do a subscriber giveaway. All the people who subscribe to me here on YouTube, you guys out there, will be eligible to win sweet, sweet swag. Sweet, sweet swag. From PAX. I don't know how I'm going to set it up yet, but I just wanted to let you guys know because you're my loves and you're cool peeps. So I wanted to let you guys know about that in case you haven't seen it already over on Twitter. And finally, Pokemon Go second generation. So Pokemon Go, it's been a while since we talked about this app, right? Because <laughs> it was great, it was awesome, and then they didn't talk to their consumer base very much, and then it kind of fell off the face of the map. But there's still plenty of people out there, mostly hardcore Pokemon fans, who still play it, which is totally cool and awesome. If you want to check out more about Pokemon Go, I totally suggest checking out The Dex, who does gaming news, uh, Pokemon gaming news, every week over on the Completionist channel. No, they're a separate channel, The Dex. I'll link it below. The point is, they just released the second generation of Pokemon on Pokemon Go. They actually released the starters, I think, late last year, but now we have 80 new Pokemon from the Johto region, including... Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totodile. This was kind of where I stopped watching the show, to be honest. I watched like the first few episodes with Chikorita and Cyndaquil and Totodile, and then I kept watching for a while, and then eventually it was just like, I don't, I, mm, mm, and then I dropped off the deep end of the Pokemon spectrum. But there's lots of good stuff coming up. No, 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 no. Evolutions are also coming. Not the ones that already exist, but Umbreon and Espeon. And actually, I read elsewhere that they've already figured out the trick on how to evolve them that way. All you have to do is type in the names of the trainers who owned the Umbreon and the name of the trainer who owned the Espeon in the show, whose names I can't remember right now, but you can look it up pretty easily. Also, there will be tons of new evolutions because, of course, some of the new second generation Pokemon evolved from original monsters. So there will be some sweet new evolutions coming our way as well. I don't know why I said our way. I kind of gave up on Pokemon Go a while ago. I suppose I can re-download it, but it takes up so much space on my phone. And as for legendaries, well, they're still not quite in the game yet, but we may see some coming up, and that's something to, you know, always hope for. And there's at least 225 Pokemon now in Pokemon Go, so you can get out there and you can catch them all. Gotta catch them all, Pokemon. And that's pretty much all the gaming news I have for this week. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I, of course, always do. But if you did, you can leave a like down below. Comments, positive or negative, if you have anything to say about these gaming news stories, please, of course, leave those below as well. But more than anything, I hope you have a lovely day, evening, or whenever you happen to be watching. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next time, this is Janky Shenanigans, signing out. Hey friends, hope you liked the video. If you did, you can find more of my content in the links off to the left here. And if you really like my content, you can become part of the year of a thousand subs here on the channel and use that button down below to subscribe. But more than that, I hope you have a lovely day and I hope to see you in the next video.